Hello. 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 Welcome. Sometimes it blips at us, like beep, 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 you're live, and sometimes it's just quiet. That's a, so on the computer, we need to remember to look at the green thing. I've been noticing on the computer we're kind of looking below. Yeah, sorry about that. You're a little green dot to us. <laughs> okay. So today, the second day in our little series, speaking your truth in ways that create even more connection and in ways that empower not only you, but also your child. Yep. So we're, this is a series that we're doing. It's a four-part series. started yesterday. You can still go see the replays because the whole series is just on our timeline. You don't have to opt in or anything. You should probably guess seeing you're seeing this. <laughs> um, and the series we, we designed this, we saw a theme coming forwards and all the people that are reaching out, all the mothers that are reaching out to us at the moment. And this theme that how do I feel heard by my children and how do I communicate in a way that still has me feeling conscious and gentle and connected and um, but I uh, but I want to feel heard and I want to feel respected and I want to feel like I matter mm, like I'm actually a valid part of this and haven't lost myself somewhere in the process yeah how do I reclaim me in this relationship and so yesterday we talked about the first part of the inner journey because it always starts within. Your communication starts from an internal place within you. And we talked about how you need the clarity of what's really going on for you before you can even start to communicate. So if you want to check out yesterday's one, you can. Today we're going to be talking about the foundational pieces that you want to do before you even open your mouth. And then tomorrow and Sunday, we're doing the outward pieces. And the last thing you need to know about this series before we jump into today's topic is there is a secret word. Oh, we, we, we actually forgot to create a secret word. That's all right, word. we'll create it as we're going and we'll tell you what it is. <laughs> secret word. There's a secret word that's going to be, that we'll tell you, this is the secret word today, a little bit later in the video. And you can either Facebook message us or email us. Just tip reply to any of our emails. Or if you're not on our email list for some reason, you can do client care at mothersawakening.com. And you can either do either of those, get in contact with us, tell us the secret word, and you are in the draw to win some awesome prizes. Which we announced, we've already announced yeah. the price, so we can tell you. It's a three-month, whole trimester scholarship into Mother Rising Sisterhood. The trimester is starting soon. The doors are closing in just a few more days. And this is our gift to come and be with us in the tribe and do the entire deep dive journey that we're going to do on really reclaiming yourself, on the wholeness that you want to bring to your experience of motherhood. And really bringing yourself back into the equation and balancing yourself internally so you're in a bit more partnership with yourself internally <laughs> so that you can achieve the partnership you want outwards. And there's actually so much more going on in the trimester. And hello to everyone joining. Good morning. Um, and maybe we'll do another video on the trimester because I, I don't want to... Yeah, we will. We want to do the class here today. Yeah. Okay. So, so today, very much about... The, the, the aspects of communication that aren't the words, which um, like sometimes surprisingly is way more than the words. Yeah, these two pieces that we're giving you today, if you set them in place, the words just float along the top of them and support it at the end. But these set up pieces can communicate your message without you even using the words. Mm. They're very powerful. Yeah. The first one? Yeah, so the first one is your intention. Before you speak, before you speak your truth, as, as well as like what we shared yesterday, listen to that video about connecting with what you're actually feeling, what you're actually needing, and the inner, <laughs> the inner experience. You also really need to tune into what your intention is for communicating, mm. why you're actually wanting to open your mouth. And, and speak. speak to this person. And if if you don't consciously connect with your intention, often other intentions take over. Intentions that um, don't really serve you and don't really um, aren't actually your true intentions. 
Yeah, I think yeah. if you don't consciously put in place an intention, if you don't say, okay, this is my intention for this conversation, mm -hmm. then weird intentions will be there and they will absolutely show up in the way you speak. <coughs> and I'm not necessarily saying that's wrong, but if you're not clear on what's going on, then that's going to create some all sorts of craziness like if you were to really tune in if you were pissed off at someone really grumpy and really frustrated and you really wanted them to see your point of view and if you really tuned into that intention you and your intention was I want to be right because that's often an intention isn't it when we're speaking <laughs> I want to be right I want to get my point across I want to prove that my point is the right point I want to get my way <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that intention is actually driving where you, what you're saying, the words that you're speaking, whether you realize it or not. And it's actually not an incredibly powerful intention to have. Well, it's often speaking. not the intention when we tune in yeah. a little deeper. It's not the one you want. So what are some of the intentions that we really want when we want to speak and communicate with another person? Mm. Be heard. Yes, to be heard and to be understood. And that's also an interesting part of this is that often when we're getting kind of run by those other intentions, like I want to be right, I just want to get my way. I just want them to do what I tell them. Then we're not actually meeting these core intentions. We're actually creating more disconnection. We're creating more misunderstandings. We're creating more walls between us and the other person. Yeah, we're putting the other person straight into defense because they, they sense these things and they've got their walls up straight away, ready to defend themselves. And when someone is defending themselves, they're not even listening to what you're saying. They're formulating their excuse or their reply or their justification or whatever it is. Mm. So a, a big intention for speaking is to be heard and to be understood and to create connection before before anything else, before like something that we've often shared in our conscious communication classes is there are no teachable moments in conflict. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling disconnected from someone, the first connect the first intention is to reconnect. Yeah. And after reconnection a lot more can happen. But before reconnection, not much else is very possible. Nope. So have a think about those intentions. If your intention is to be heard, to be received, to be understood, to connect. They are some of the main ones. Mm. What's a really valid intention for wanting to feel like you matter? Well, maybe that is the intention. I don't know. But I was just thinking because that's a common thread for the women we've talked to lately. Like they want their they want to feel like their kids are to be received, <laughs> to be received, and to be yeah. heard, and yeah. to be understood. And then, like on from that, more follows. Like, yeah. but, but at the beginning, if someone really hears you and receives you, like if your children actually, <coughs> sorry, if they actually understand where you're coming from, if they hear your feelings and hear your needs, that is such a big step yeah. in the direction of mattering and feeling like you. Yeah. A part of it again. So yesterday we gave you the practice for 24 hours to live into, well we did tracking, um, but we also, your external piece of practice saying this when you're communicating was, I'm feeling this and I'm needing that, yeah? So I'm feeling X and I'm needing Y. And in terms of what we're talking about today with your intention, it's actually a really awesome, that flows really well. You want to be heard. You want to be received. You want to connect. It is an awesome connective strategy to be willing to be authentic and real and a bit vulnerable and share what's going on for you straight up. So that all flows with these intentions. Sometimes we can forget the intention, what our intention is for speaking. Mm -hmm. So that's the point we're making here. Really have a think about what is my intention for this moment. Set an intention for this moment because it will affect your choice of words. Things that come out afterwards. Yeah. And as we'll talk more about after we talk about energy, you also want to embody your intention. Yep. You want your intention to be where you're coming from, where your words are coming from and where your body language is coming from. You want to be 
congruent with it so that there's no like confusion and mix match and like we're well, saying one thing but she's acting another way yeah, it's not really <laughs> landing yeah because that's when your communication is really powerful yeah that's when it lands so that's yeah. where we're we'll talk going. more about how to do that in the video today for sure yes okay so the second piece of these foundational aspects that you want to put in place before you open your mouth. The second one is your energy. We touched on this just briefly yesterday. Your energy, the vibe that you're giving off is huge in terms of what your children are perceiving from you. Children use their ability to interpret and read the world around them. They use energy as part of the way they do that absolutely we all do even humans are still doing that uh, like our humans <laughs> adults are still doing that all humans do that that's what i meant to say um children use it as one of their primary ways of learning to interpret and understand the world so they are really adept at reading your energy and so the energy that you're putting, the, when you say, okay, what energy will most serve me right now? What quality will most serve me in this conversation? And you embody it, and we'll talk about how to embody that in a second. That is communicated absolutely to your children. It's for communicated sure. louder than your words. It is louder than your words. And... When I started really playing with this, my youngest, who's now not, nearly nine, um, he was about two. <laughs> and at the time, I was studying natural horsemanship, um, which is about being in partnership with your horse. I mean, there's a lot involved in it, and I'm going to get into the whole topic, but being in partnership with your horse and how you choose to communicate to your horse Obviously, you can't really use language because that's not something that they're going to get so much. And one of the big tools is embodying a specific energy and intention as you're directing your horse. And then you're just directing your horse with your, with your body. Whether you're on the ground, not even on the horse, or whether you're on the horse, you should be able, horse and rider can communicate through that energy. And at the time I was playing with those in the in the paddock with the horses and we came back from a session and I don't know if you guys have had this happen I'm sure you have because I've seen it so many times with toddlers but <laughs> Finn got out of the car like I got him out of his car seat and got out and he just started running off down the street in a craziness he'd been running around the paddock he was really high energy and he was just running off down the street <laughs> and he he really was in a cheeky, playful mood and he totally was going to test boundaries. There was all sorts of stuff going on. And I just wanted to get into the house and get lunch made because I was running late, blah, 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 blah. So I embodied, what I did is I took my intention for the moment and I took the energy I wanted to project. Do I want to share all that? I suppose yeah, I could. Totally. I should. <laughs> share the whole process. It's a powerful one. <laughs> okay. So my intention in that moment was to maintain connection with my son and for this to not become a shit fight. So I had a really strong intention around I want this to be a connective moment. And I embodied this energy that I'd been practicing in the paddock around inner leadership at the time. And just being really grounded and really clear in at for example, wanting my horse to come to me, come up to me, you know, <laughs> it's called joining up. But yeah, I was practicing that. So I just kind of got lower down on the ground. I looked at him, I embodied my intention, I embodied my energy. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute. And I didn't do anything. I just held my arms open like this and I just waited. And he stopped, he stopped dead and he looked at me and he still had his cheeky smile on. I just held my energy. I didn't even talk. I didn't actually say anything. And then slowly, it was almost like I was pulling him with a rope. He started taking a few steps forwards, and then he'd stop, and then a few more steps forwards, and I just maintained it. Um, I think, yeah, I think I opened my arms in the middle of the process or whatever, you know, like I was like, yep, yeah, I'm just here, and this is my intention, this is my energy. I still wasn't speaking. And then about just a couple seconds later, he just ran straight to me and threw himself into my arms and hugged me and we just went in like 
I didn't actually even use any words in that process. <laughs> so your intention and your energy is incredibly powerful without even words. Like really hear what we're saying here. In fact, I would say it's 80% of what you do in your communication is nonverbal. And a huge piece of them is your intention and your energy. Your body language flows out of that. Okay, so these are really <coughs> crucial pieces that we're suggesting that you really be conscious of. Yeah, I have another little story mm -hmm. kind of like that of when a time when I really realized how powerful that was. Um, a fair few years ago, my children were probably like five and seven or so, and I had been having this dynamic with them where. I was getting resentful and frustrated because they were asking me to do so many things that I wanted them to do themselves. And quite a few times I'd be like, kind of fr not from a embodied place, kind of just like, just do it yourself. And then getting frustrated and almost expecting that they wouldn't. And, and they'd like just completely play on it and not want to do it. And one time my son, my son came and asked me if I'd do something for him. And I just, I had, I had been practicing kind of how do I embody my energy and my intentions. And I just took a breath, connected with my needs. Like, I really want to just sit here and do what I'm doing. And like, this is important to me. And I just looked at him in the eye and said, you can do it yourself. And I think it was go get something from the car. Here's the car key. It's right there. You do it yourself. And I said it from a place of real embodied congruency, like this matters to me and I'm worth it. I matter in a way that I hadn't before. And he just looked at me and nodded and just went and did it. And so often in the past before then, he would have pushed it and gone like, please, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling lazy or I'm, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. It was just, it was like, ah. Oh the way that I embody it, the way that I say it is so powerful, matters so, so much. So, so much. Yeah. So for Kaya in that moment, she could have had any number of intentions and she could have projected any energy. She could have just projected the energy of total belief that he could totally do this. Yes, that was definitely. You know, that's a really strong energy. I know you can totally do this. <laughs> and the intention, you know, she could have had any intention. The point is, that when you bring that into your conscious awareness and you bring it into your body, then the communication flows. Yes. So let's do the secret word at this point. And I think the secret word should be intention. Yeah. The secret word of today is intention. Intention. We could have picked energy, but we picked intention. <laughs> so message us on Facebook or email us on Client Care at Mother's Awakening and you're in the draw. That's all you need to do. And don't put it in the comments. Don't put it in the comments because <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> okay, so the last piece today is how do you put this into practice? What am I going to take forwards for the next 24 hours and play with and experiment and see what happens? Mm. So how do you take that intention and that energy once you've decided? Yeah, get, that's the first step. First step is tune into what it is. Get clear on what it is. And it could be gazillions of things, but pick something um, so that you have clarity. And something that feels true and empowering and connecting. Absolutely. Yes for you. It's got to feel true. If it feels fake to you, don't use it as your current intention or energy. Find another one. Because yeah. you it won't you won't really fully get it and then your congruency will be off. And that's also another part about that is that like you don't you don't want to force yourself into a space where you're not. Like if you're like, Oh my intention should be um I don't know, unconditional giving or love, and you're really not in that space, honor that. Like, yeah. you, you need to go where you're at, and in the space, like, you, you, it's stepping stones, where you're at is incredibly valid. Don't try to push yourself somewhere else, because then you can't embody it. It's not going to be congruent. Yeah, seriously. Intention and energy has to feel alive and authentic for you if you want clear communication. Mm -hmm. And not even just when you're speaking. Like, speak is one of the four spheres of conscious communication that we teach. But it doesn't matter what sphere you're in, whether you're mediating conflict between siblings or you're giving feedback 
feedback or you're holding space or whatever it is, your intention and your energy is always your foundation, always. And it's got to be real and it's got to be alive so that it's congruent for you. Okay, so you have something that feels authentic to you that you can connect to. I'm going to give you two different ideas to play with today to practice embodying that before you speak. Yeah, so... Should we do the breathe one first and then the other one second? Yeah. They just flow a bit better. Okay. Okay, so one thing to do is ask yourself, well, this is when you're deciding your energy, what energy do I want to project into this situation that will most serve me? or most serve my intention, either one, and it's got to feel like you can really do it, it's got to feel authentic, okay, and then how do I embody it, I want you to imagine that it was a color or a texture or anything, and I want you to breathe it into your body, right down low into your body, deep into your pelvis, and I think we've talked about womb space, so we won't open that up right now, but really anchor it down in your body. Breathe it in and imagine it just rippling through you, this quality. Just allow it to expand. Every in-breath and out-breath, feel it expanding inside your body. Just do two breaths, three breaths of that. Like it's becoming who you are. Yeah, it's just show up in the world. flooding you with your intention and your energy. Either or is fine. Or both. Or both, yes. And have a little play with moving walking from that energy from that intention because you'll move differently um kind of relates back to the horses <laughs> but like you'll move your body will move in a very specific way you'll show up in a different way you'll hold your body in a different way your body language will just totally sink so breathe imagine breathing in the quality and expanding it in your body more and more okay that's the first one to play to practice embodying your intention and your energy and the second mm. one, you do the second one. Yeah, so it's kind of similar, but it's um, asking yourself, like, who do I need to be or how, who do I need to be to embody that right now? Like, if I were to be the kind of person who is whatever your intention is, mm. who is whatever your energy is, how would I show up? How would I sit in the moment? How would I stand? How would I speak? Like, what would be the... Who would I be? Yes. This is about your beingness. And practice being it then and there. And mm. practice embodying it before you speak. Mm. Okay, so those are your takeaways for today to go practice and play with. You've got your secret word. Message us, because there's a really good chance that you'd win. That would be good. What else? That's it. That's the takeaways. Practice yeah. those for the next 24 hours before tomorrow because tomorrow we start to go outward on the actual speaking practices, the, the outward relational strategy. You've already done huge amounts, so much that in some situations that's enough. You don't even have to use words at this point. But the times when you actually need to have a conversation we're going to give you the outer strategies the speaking ones tomorrow and sunday now yeah just a few of them yeah because <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot in fact when we teach the speak section of conscious communication yeah it's actually i don't know there's 40 or 50 different speak strategies that we teach just in that class it's all in our book here but I, oh yeah this book <laughs> is got like a, a poster full of practices for each sphere and this is the speak sphere mm. okay i think that's it so we'll, we will be bringing those into the next couple of days yes. you'll hear some of them come up not all of them because we're not going to flood you but just enough that you can totally be making a shift um to the people that are emailing us and messaging us with questions and feedback Thank you. Yes. Keep going for it. We love hearing from you all. We are replying to everyone. We get not everyone's posting on the comments here. If you feel up to posting on the comments, that's awesome for us because it helps people, other people see us, which is kind of what we're hoping for too. Yes. If there's someone, a mother that you know who could really benefit from this series, please share it with them because we would love to support them as well. Mm. You just, I don't know, hit the share button, don't you? Yes, you do. Just hit the share button. Or tag them. Yeah. And, and well, stay tuned. And you could, seeing as you're here, you could 
totally win a scholarship into Mother Rising. Mm -hmm. But stay tuned about Mother Rising as well, because the doors are closing next Tuesday. But four days? Yeah. Four really days soon. left. <sighs> We'd love to have you inside, even if you were, like, kind of thinking about it, but um, not sure. We promise you won't regret the decision. Promise. And the group, the sisterhood that's forming is special and beautiful. They're all supporting each other. We've got all, we've already started. There's all sorts of things with the group in terms of the check-in chains yeah. and supporting each other. There's and already so much assistance. trust and safety. They're already sharing yeah. them, their full selves. Yeah. It's super yeah. special and we're really excited. I can't wait till we start that first workshop, which is yeah. coming so soon. Okay, I think that's it today. Thank you for being here with us. See you tomorrow. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.